Hey guys, Kelby with South Plains Trains here, coming at you with the new SD40-2F Red Barn Bowser locomotive. Um, first impressions, looks great. Um, the detailing is great, and as always, there's going to be some awesome pictures of this locomotive at the end of the video. Um, the one that we're reviewing today is number 9000. It's the dual flag uh, paint, as you can see. Um, some things, you know, these are Canadian, so I don't know how many of you guys actually pay attention that much, but you're going to have some differences. The bells up there by the by the cab, or on the cab, you got the three windows. Um, you have a single light in the rear. Just, just some other small stuff. Um, the winterization hatch on the on the top, and you'll see all this in in the last in the pictures at the end. Um, something that kind of, you know, this is a different unit. This is a cow hood unit, so it is wide, um, so that the guys can work inside on the motor while it's cold and everything else. Um, you still see these running today. These are, I actually saw um, some of the Dash Eight, which Rapido has coming out uh, in the fall, but. It was a cow unit down here in Midland, Texas. Uh, pretty wild. I wasn't expecting to see that. It was a BC rail. So anyway, let's go ahead and run through some of the features. Um, I guess one thing I should say, I have noticed that the uh, speaker is a little quiet. So I'm sure that you can up the volume a little bit. But overall, it's not as loud as some of the units I've reviewed in the past. So that may be a small complaint on some of you guys. Whenever you do get these, you may want to look at upgrading the speaker to something else or maybe doing a dual speaker setup so that your uh, impotence comes down a little bit. So anyway, I just noticed that the uh, wheel is off here, so let me get that fixed. Alright, so now we're ready to roll. Alright, so let's go ahead and go through our startup sequence. Alright, so now that we're started up, let's go ahead and turn on some lights. Alright, so you see that the uh, the headlight and the number board lights come on at the same time. So watch the number board. You can kind of see that. Alright, so you can see they come on immediately and the headlight kind of uh, dims away. Um, this does have some ditch lights on it. On the front of it, so you can see those right there. And they're nice and bright. Um, the headlight from the side doesn't look that bright, but whenever you look at it head on, it looks pretty good. It looks like a normal, um, you know, headlight. Um, it also has the uh, class lights that are selectable. And so you see, I just turned on the white there. If you select F5 again, this is F5, it goes to the green. And then F5 again turns to red. And if you hit it one more time, they go off. So. That is a pretty cool feature. Um, I know that a lot of the ESU low sound locomotives are coming out with all these crazy light features these days. It's pretty awesome. And it really is one of those things that I cannot believe they fit so many functions onto one decoder. It's just crazy. Um, these lights are all LED. So you do have the long term um, usage out of them where you don't have to replace them, which is really nice. Unlike a lot of, unlike some companies that are still using bulbs. Um, other things, uh, a lot of people have started noticing that some companies are putting rolling bearing caps on the trucks. This one does not have it, but I would not be surprised to say that somewhere in the near future Bowser may be doing that. Because these are made in the same factory as Intermountain stuff, uh, you can tell by the packaging. So the new Intermountain Tier 4s have roller bearing caps, so maybe some of the Bowser stuff will too come down the road. Um, these do have an MSRP of $319.99, I think, for sound, and $219.99 for non-sound DCC ready. Um, that is a little bit higher. It's about $20 higher than the normal MSRP. So the prices will be, you know, the street prices will be according to that. Um, anywhere from $220 to all the way to $275. Canadian dollars, I don't really know. It's going to be a lot different, especially with the exchange rate changing all the time. So, uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get her fired back up again. Now, 
get it rolling forward. Other things I've noticed, the actual uh, motor is really nice and quiet on these. So I know the other SD40-2s that they just came out with not too long ago had um, a little bit of motor noise out of the box, which that would definitely be broken in and go away. But as you can tell, this is probably speed step two, I think. It's nice and smooth. Definitely a smooth runner, definitely really nice. So let's go ahead and kick it in reverse. So, as you can tell, the detailing looks really good. Um, I'm really impressed overall with this locomotive. I know it's been one of those things that we've been waiting to come out for a while. And I think it was definitely worth the wait. I remember whenever these announced, I had, I think, six of them on order for myself. And I couldn't wait for these things to come out. So, um, one thing to notice, you saw the ditch lights and the headlights all come back on at the same time. That was whenever I switched directions. So, the ditch lights do automatically go off whenever it's in reverse, which is a nice feature. Some locomotives don't do that. Um, some other things to mention, the bell. Like I said, guys, it's a little quiet, so you may have to mess with the CVs or even change the speaker a little bit, but it will get the job done. If you're in a club setting, you probably won't hear it that well. So anyway, here's Cupper Flank. Oh, I thought it was. It doesn't want to do it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put drive hold on here. So, definitely listen to the, to the motor spool up. So it does sound good guys, and I mean this is definitely what we've come to expect with Bowser quality. Um, you expect the best, and I have not been let down by anything Bowser related yet. So be buy with confidence on these on these things um the roof detailing on this looks really good all the lift rings um the horns on the side here as you can kind of see um the underbody detail it's not not a lot up there as what we've seen in these latest runs from intermountain scale trains and all these other guys but it is really nice um the handrails do seem a little thick on the front and the rear so right here this does look a little thick to me based on prototype, but overall it doesn't look toyish and it doesn't look overly thick. It just looks good. Um, and they really do pop out since they're white on top of the red. I'm sure Rob Arsenal is going to make some awesome weathering on some of these guys. If you're not familiar with him, weathermytrains.com, super great guy. He does awesome weathering for Canadian stuff. So anyway guys, um, I'm actually running really low on stock myself. Uh, I know Bowser's already sold out of all of these, so I may not have any available to you guys to purchase, but I just wanted to go ahead and get this video out there so that y'all see what it looks like, how it runs, um, just a quick overview of it. it, has a lot of light features, let's go ahead and turn it on, it'll do it. Alright, so, um, just everything on it is really nice, we'll do a quick flyby like we usually do as well. You can see all the details on it. You can see that the uh, the fan up there on top is really nice and detailed. The exhaust port is pretty nice. And these are the little details I was talking about that you can see. Uh, the winterization hatch. Uh, the little cowl radiator size. They look pretty nice. They do have some depth to them. And this is the rear of the locomotive. It all looks good, guys. You can't complain. It almost looks like brass quality in the photos and, and everything else I'm seeing here. So, I can't complain. Uh, quick, quick weight test of it like we usually do. Go ahead and put this out here. Lift it up here. Um, it is 20.6 ounces. So that's over a pound. That is a pound and four ounces. Uh, not quite a pound and a half. But it is, it is pretty heavy. So I think you're going to get some pretty good pulling power out of it. And you're going to get some, some really strong 
good looking trains being pulled with these suckers. So anyway, guys, I appreciate your time. I appreciate all the support with South Plains Trains. You guys are what makes the difference. And uh, I really do appreciate it. Without you guys, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. We also have a, a new Tier 4 video about to come out. So be on the lookout for that with Intermountain. Those things are super awesome, super wicked. So definitely check out the page for those as well. Anyway, guys, thanks again. This is Kelby Vice with South Plains Trains. Peace out.